Hello, hello everybody, and something has never happened to me before, and I really can't explain it, but I have a problem with my shrimp, and I have no idea how I got it. I have what I am 99% sure is called Scuderella, Scuderella Japonica. The good news is that it is really not that harmful for the shrimp according to the research I've known I've known about it but I haven't really dug into it because I've never had a problem and I really would like to know the big question is how in the world did this show up in my tank I have not added any plants any fish in over two years and I have not added a shrimp any new shrimp in my any of my tanks in over three years and yet I have this guy showing up so in this video, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna talk about how I discovered I had it. That's an interesting story in itself. And then I did some quick research on how to cure it. And I'm gonna show you what I have done to do that. So I have this really, really cool customer. I've been helping him get started with shrimp. His name is Michael. Huge shout out to Michael for helping me with this. Michael's a really smart guy and come to find out after discussing with this with him today he's a retired biologist so he knows what he's talking about just new to shrimp he had got some of my blue dreams and he sent me this pic and he was asking what in the world do we have here oh and then I mentioned Michael is a retired biologist and he has microscopes that he can take video on and he took this up for me and sent me these and I have his permission to use them in this video that is a super super zoomed in version with the microscope of Scuderella Japonica up close and personal you can see the little worm it's got two little they got like little antennas or something on their head and then one of these close-ups you can even see eyeballs now from what I've researched these guys are a flatworm kind of what that is what planaria is and again yeah look at that the the close-up view of the shrimp is super super cool but I remember like it was either earlier this week or last week this is the one where you can see the eyeballs I've never had anything like this before I've never had any problems and I haven't got any new shrimp, so it wasn't even on my radar of things to be looking for. I saw a shrimp with a little white dot on its head, and I thought it was like a piece of a molt stuck on there or something. That's what I personally thought. But after looking it up and reading it up and seeing what all this is, here back to my shrimp. So what I've done, the course of action I've taken is all the shrimp that I could catch that I could see with noticeable signs notice this is there's what six shrimp maybe seven shrimp in here and every shrimp that I could see with noticeable signs of it I caught up I'm sure I missed several more but just just to do that the least invasive way to treat this is a salt dip just a short salt dip I'll show you how to do that but then after that you need to take out the molts because when the shrimp molts the eggs of this flatworm are left behind in the molt and then they spread that is what I've discovered how this thing goes if you go with the less invasive salt treatment then you got to collect all the molts out now however you can also use something like finbendazole and I have a supply of finbendazole, finbendazole I'll share a link in the description of how to dose that I have I just just a few weeks ago I made a pretty good video about how to dose finbendazole so I have dosed my 40 gallon blue dreams tank with finbendazole in addition to catching these guys out that I could noticeably see it to do the salt dip on so when Michael sent me this email and these pictures, I immediately I, I saw that shrimp with the white dot on its head. And I went and looked and looked real close and I saw more. And I saw, you know, not tons of them, but there's, there's several in there. And 
some of them had it worse than others some of these ones in the on the black substrate in the tank you can see it more clearly but here in the specimen container even zoomed up it's kind of hard to see it on some of them I've been a shrimp keeper for five years always bought high quality home bread I thought this was something that only people with imports and stuff had to worry about but somehow I ended up with it I guess it could be like planaria where it just shows up I, I honestly don't know I haven't done enough research on it I just wanted to look up and see what I had and how I, what I need to do to get rid of it and that's when I discovered it is really not all that harmful unless it reaches infestation levels your shrimp are not really in real bad danger and it's pretty easy to get rid of so here we go now this is the salt I've got I keep this stuff had this in my fish room for a while just in case I need to use salt it's not salt with no iodine it's just natural sea salt no extra stuff so you don't want the iodine, you just want natural or any aquarium salt will work. This is my three specimen containers I had. The one on the left has the shrimp in it. The one, the big one in the middle has tank water and the one on the right is empty. Alright, so now it's time to put the salt in. Uh, there's answers all over the place on the internet how much salt to put in there. I'm not completely sure so I just kind of eyeballed it and went to like eh, that looks pretty salty there's answers all over the place so I just went with what I thought was good enough if anything I probably didn't put enough salt in there I'm guessing but because a lot of people say as soon as you dip the shrimp in there they disappear and they look smaller and less and I quit seeing them moving after the salt dip but there's still some visually on there so I put some tank water in the salt and now we're gonna get the salt dissolved I've seen videos on there where people didn't even dissolve the salt they just put the shrimp in there I figured it'd be a good idea to dissolve the salt and I remind you this is not a how-to video this is my first attempt this is just what I am trying to do so don't take this as a how-to video because I am still, <laughs> this is, I've been keeping shrimp for five years, breeding and selling them for a long time. And this is the first time I've ever had anything like this. So now we're going to take the shrimp cup and we're going to pour that water in through the net. And the net is going to catch the shrimp. And there they are. And now it's time for the salt dip. And you can see as soon as these guys hit the water, oh my god, we don't like that. We're going to jump around. You can tell they really don't like it. But they're taking it. They're darting around. They're real. Their motions are herky-jerky. I imagine they probably wouldn't last that long in that water. But that's why it's just a short dip. I believe I went with 20 or 30 seconds. That was also all over the place. But the one thing that seems to be pretty fail safe is fenbendazole, but I know from experience treating my guppies and using fenbendazole, we don't want to put have to keep dosing fenbendazole in our tank, in our shrimp tanks, because shrimp do not like repeated doses, and I'm hoping one dose is enough. Now, they're out of the salt water, back in their water. They, they look perfectly fine. I didn't see any ill effects. Now mind you, this is a 40 gallon tank with hundreds of shrimp in it. So really, I don't think my infection level has been that bad. But yeah, it really sucks that it was a customer who had to discover this. But he was really, really cool about it. We, he helped me, I helped him. It, we're all good. I even offered to pay for meds if he needed them, or I would offer his money back if he wanted it. He he said things happen, and that's all right. So I'm thankful for that. And I feel soup. I felt horrible, 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 because you know, homebred shrimp. How in the world did this even happen? So if any of you guys out there, 
Now this can just appear or maybe it's been sitting there dormant for it's been in the tank all these years and maybe conditions just hit that right level or hey it's time to start infecting shrimp and start going maybe maybe that's what's happened I don't know but I checked all my tanks look so so close at all my tanks and I don't see it anywhere I've looked I've spent hours today looking at tanks and here they are you can see there's definitely less on them some of them still have a little bit on them but there's definitely a lot lot less and so by this point I've already dosed the tank with Finn Bendazole and I'm going to do a full week treatment full course on them hopefully well I'm going to do the one dose and then hopefully in a in a couple of days when it's time to do another dose if I don't see any more on there I'm going to wait and maybe do one more dose in a couple of weeks because I know like I said from guppies from treating my guppy tanks and there's always shrimp in my guppy tanks the shrimp do not like fenbendazole I don't think this guy was in the specimen container because if you look you can even see the eggs or they get in the gill plates of the shrimp and I think those little white dots there are that's what that is. I think that's the Scuderella. So, uh, this is another, dang, stuff that had to happen, but this is what makes me a better shrimp keeper, and hopefully I helped you guys be better shrimp keepers sharing my experiences. So, thank you guys for watching. Bye.